So now, finally I'm getting answers, and for the next nine months this continues. Average conversation is about seven hours. Five to seven hours, usually seven hours. I get into it so much, everything I learn I start to teach my wife. She loves it also, we're getting answers, we're asking questions. He later on tells me that he used to pray a special prayer before our conversations to have the answers. I said, what do you mean, have the answers? You knew the page number, you knew the Rob, you knew the year. He says, but before you asked the question, I didn't know the question existed. I never asked the question. I didn't ask the same questions you asked. I never cared about that stuff until you asked it. That's what's called Siyat Vishmaya. You want Siyat Vishmaya? You want help from heaven? You want a special deal with Hashem? Do Kiruv. Spend time, spend five minutes a day. Who gets more than 310 worlds? Who gets to a higher level than Malachi Asharet? Someone that spends time every day doing Kiruv. Hashem said here, if you bring forth an honorable person from a glutton, then you will be like my mouth. What is it like to be like Hashem's mouth? Hashem says to Chazal, I created the heaven and the earth and I can revive the dead. You're the same as me. Your prayers, whether you're asking for a new job, a bat zug, an honorable wife, an honorable husband, good children, full health, parnasa, refuah lema, more siyat bishmai with your Torah, more siyat bishmai with your tshuva, that's just the beginning. What do you need to do? Five minutes a day. Start with five minutes a day, Kiru. So we go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 19. Therefore thus said Hashem, If you repent, I will bring you back and let you stand before me. First part means your tshuva is always welcome. Even if you did idol worship, which is by the way, in case someone doesn't know, it's the same thing as Chilul Shabbat. In Hashem's eyes, another source of proof, notice every time Chilul Shabbat is mentioned in the Torah, idol worship right next to it. Ten Commandments, Chilul Shabbat, Fourth Commandment, next to it, idol worship. Why? To Hashem, it's the same thing. You could have desires, but doesn't mean you have to act upon them. Somebody has the desire to kill. There are certain people that have a desire for blood but they have a choice. They can either become a murderer or a butcher or a surgeon. All three see blood and they're fine with it. It's your choice. I start doing tshuva, I start listening, I start keeping some mitzvot, I start praying, I start crying, I start realizing that I'm in a serious problem. What's my problem? Aside from the money being lost and running out of my life, aside from all of my friends becoming enemies, from all of this disaster that I'm living, I realize that my situation at home with the love of my life is not okay. The only woman that would have ever stayed with me through this disaster that should have left years ago was with me, was excited to be with me. I'm in pain, she's excited to be with me. Take care of me, make me food, clean my wounds, the blood, get a gnome that I was living with, treat me like I was a king, run my company, build my company, anything you want. Genius. She wasn't Jewish. When someone is Jewish, he's not allowed to be with a non-Jew. Now I always knew that, but I couldn't justify this being wrong. When people would tell me, listen, don't you want her to convert and have Jewish kids? I said, if she wants to be Jewish, she'll be Jewish. I can't tell her to do something I'm not doing. I'm not a hypocrite. But then she says, yeah, but I can never convert. There's no such thing. I said, no, no, I heard people convert. She goes, no, I don't think it's, I don't think it exists. That's how little we knew. We didn't know that Rabbi Akiva, the greatest Baal Tshuva in history, came from converts. Some of the greatest people in all of history were converts. After I realized that we can't stay the same, we can't stay together, I couldn't bring myself to leave her. It's the only person that would tolerate me. So now I started learning about Christianity. Because you can't stop making someone believe something. So what do you have to do? If anyone's ever had a debate and you want to win, you have to know more information about their subject than they do. You have to know more about their side. Use proofs from their side, from their life. And you show them how they're wrong by using their own information. This is how the best lawyers in the world win arguments. This is how the best debaters win arguments. This is how politicians win arguments. This is how you win. You cannot win with your tools. You have to win with their tools. And then after you've gotten ahead, then you use your tools. I start becoming obsessive, not only with learning Torah, but also learning about this Abu Dazra they call Christianity. And I see that there's a lot of mistakes, there's a lot of contradictions, but I still think at this point that, yeah, it's just Judaism is better. Christianity is like second class. There's like mistakes in it, there's some guy that has some crazy story, and for some reason everyone draws him with long hair and a beard, he looks like a rock star. I don't know, whatever, they want to believe this crazy story, fine. So I start becoming obsessive, I listen to this Rabbi uh, Tobia Singer, genius, knows more about both the Torah, of course, and the New Testament, than any Catholic, any Christian, any scholar. He knows it by heart, he knows every pasuk. It's amazing. 
I liked them, full of information. I bring this to my wife, excited. I'm, you know, it's like five o'clock in the morning. I'm as excited as I can get. I'm like a, you know, Einstein. And I bring her this thing and she shoots me down like a shh, nothing. He speaks too fast for me, I'm not interested. I can't understand what he says and I have to look up the verses. He, make, he mentions 50 verses in two seconds. I can't read, I can't even hear or listen or write that fast, not interested. So what do you do when you have no choice? You cry to Hashem. Hashem that you just met for the first time in your life. You start crying, you start reading Tehillim, you start praying with tears. You want your prayers answered? Start crying, man. It's no shame in crying to Hashem. Women, be a machmirim in crying. It's good to cry. To Hashem, best thing in the world. All of the gates of heaven have been closed. The only one that remains open is the gate for tears. I cry to Hashem. I learn His Torah. Work is becoming more and more meaningless to me. Money never really meant much in the first place. But as I continue to lose money, I start caring less and less. But I need to find an answer. I find other debates, other rabbis, other proofs. I even have Rabbi Ephraim send me information. He even spent time learning this stuff just for me. He writes this whole journal, this whole letter of proofs against Christianity. I prepare this project for my wife and I'm like, here. Yeah. I'm so, so excited. Usually it was like four o'clock in the morning. And she's trying to sleep and I'm wired and I give her this thing, or sometimes it's the first thing I give her when she wakes up. Instead of saying good morning, it's like, here, honey, I stayed up all night and I prepared this thing for you. She's leaving me alone. What do you want from my life? Let me drink coffee, wake up, right? Something. I was, I give her this information. It's nice, but it's not enough.